What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this video, we have the Tad Performance 14 inch Folsom Prison Series bars. Justin brought his Electroglide standard in 2021. He's currently got the Yaffe 10 inch bars with the one inch diameter. We're gonna go to the Tad Performance Folsom Prison Series bars with that inch and a half diameter. I'm pretty sure he's excited to go from the 10 inch to the 14 inch. This is gonna feel a lot better, uh, just a more comfortable ride. And then we also have the Fat Baggers Easy Install Kit. This is something that you can add on that Tap Performance offers on their website. It's got everything you need as far as the clutch extension and also your brake line extension. We'll see if we get to the extended brake line. Uh, we'll try to modify his line, not modify it, but pretty much just reroute it uh, to get it to extend in order to reach the bars. Uh, but if not, we'll try out the extended brake line. Fat Baggers made it very simple to get this thing installed. Now Tap Performance does include the braided line. That way it helps guide those wires through the bars. Now we do have the Harley Davidson polyurethane riser bushings. I do recommend that you change the bushings out anytime you change your bars. We'll see if they change the bushings out when he had his other bars installed. Now I do recommend the polyurethane riser bushings. They last a lot longer and they provide more stability. Yeah, he's a good looking set of bars. We're ready to get them installed. I'm sure he's excited. You ready to get them on? Oh man, let's do it. All right, let's go. All right, so here you have the Fat Baggers Easy Install Kit. You do have to purchase this separately, and Tap Performance does offer this on their website. You have your cable clutch extension here, some zip ties. You have your jelly to run your wires through. They offer you some line to pull your wires through, and then you have your brake line extension. Now, for the instructions, you do have a QR code right here. You just scan it with your phone, and either a video or a PDF is gonna pop up explaining how to install it. All right, obviously what you wanna do before you start removing anything, you wanna cover up the front fender. We'll remove the front fairing. You have three screws right here and there are T27 Torx. Now with your screws, you're gonna have two short screws on the outside and that center one is always a longer one. So I do like to put the center screw back in just to support the outer fairing when I'm removing the other screws. Now I'm remove these two Torx screws. You have them on both sides. This will be a longer screw. This will be a shorter screw. Same thing, T27. Now I'll just remove the center windshield screw. Take the windshield out. And then just disconnect the headlight from the back. All right, so he's got the aftermarket headlight on here. It's gonna have an extension. Just disconnect your headlight here. So now I'm gonna remove the seat and then the tank. Uh, you're gonna disconnect the gray connector that's leading up to the fuel tank. And then you also have a vent hose. You'll disconnect it here. So usually you'll have a couple of zip ties on your overflow hose. You just cut those uh, carefully. Just make sure you're not cutting any other wires and then just pull that hose out. So I'll just loosen up the bag just so we can get this side cover off. Now here you have the ABS system. Uh, you don't have to worry about going to the dealership and getting this reset. The brake line extension that Fat Baggers offers makes it really simple to get it all connected in the front and then you just bleed it that way and then you don't have to worry about messing with your ABS. Now he does have some aftermarket lighting here. So I'm just gonna cut these zip ties that are secured to the connector for the fuel tank. And then we'll get these screws out in the back, two screws in the front, and then we'll get the tank off. So now I'll get this side cover off so we can access the main fuse and pull it out. So disconnect the fuel line, just push up on this collar and your fuel line will pop right out. You'll still have some fuel that comes out so just have a rag, catch any of that fuel. So here you have your two screws in the back of the tank and they're a half inch. All right, so you have caps on these front two screws. You just pop those off and then same thing, half inch. All right, and then here just carefully lift up and back on the fuel tank and it should come right off. Just make sure all your connections are disconnected. Now, before I take out all the screws for the fairing, I'm gonna go ahead and get these wires disconnected. That way the fairing's not moving around when I'm pulling all these wires off. 
Now, I know it looks like a lot of wires, but you really just gotta follow whatever's going towards the neck and then towards the back. Those are the wires you wanna disconnect. That way, when you pull the fairing off, nothing's getting snagged. All right, so here you have a tab for this big connector. This is your main harness here, your stereo. Just pull that off. These are just different connectors for your whim, and then you have your jumper for Apple CarPlay. And then this will be, if you had rear speakers for a tour pack, you can connect them right here. So here you have your USB cable. You don't need to disconnect this one. This just goes to your media compartment. Just take this connector out. This is your AM FM. That's gonna lead back towards your antenna. So you wanna pull this one out. The tab is usually on the bottom and it's easier to push it in with a screwdriver. And you can also leave your GPS on because your GPS is usually located right up here. So you don't have to disconnect that one. Now, because this amp is hardwired in and is leading towards the back, we do have to remove the vent and also remove this amp. That way we can drop it down. So to remove this vent, you have two screws on each side and they're a T27. All right, then your vent, just slide it back. So once I reach this point is when I realized that I had to disconnect everything. A lot of these wires are hardwired in into the amp and running towards the back. That's why I'm a big fan of plug and play. That way you can quickly disconnect your wires and pull your fairing off. So here you have your twist grip sensor. You would just pop this Christmas tree out and then disconnect it here. And then usually you have your right handlebar switch harness here along with the run stop switch. And then you would have your left handlebar switch harness here. Those are disconnected and probably ran towards the rear. In order to accommodate those bars, they probably have them running through. So we'll see where they're at and then get them disconnected. So we're disconnecting the left and right main to fairing harness. So you just wanna disconnect these two harnesses here. Obviously you can't mix these up. You got gray to gray and black to black. And also these two speaker wires are running through the support bracket. So I have to pull the support bracket off. So to remove the upper support bracket, you have a total of 11 screws. You should have four screws right here that mount it to the radio. These are missing whenever they install the amp. Then you have two more screws up here and you have two on the sides that mount it to the speaker enclosures. These are usually a T25. And then you have one more screw right here. All right, so unfortunately, whoever wired up uh, his system, uh, they ran some wires through some places where we had to just take off the speaker pods and then disconnect them. Uh, I'm pretty sure your setup won't be like this, but if it is, you know, just work it. You wanna make sure you get all those wires um, that's running towards the neck disconnected. We obviously had to take pretty much everything apart. Uh, he could change out his interfering right now if he wanted to, but we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the wiring. Here you have your twist grip sensor. You just have a push tab right here. I just use a picking tool, it makes it a little easier. It's usually located right here with the Christmas tree connector. Just poked in, just pop it out and then disconnect it. Here you have your ground. It's not connected to the fairing, so you don't have to worry about disconnecting that. So we'll go ahead and remove the turn signal. You have your two acorn nuts and these are a half inch. Disconnect your turn signal and then just run this wire through so it doesn't get snagged onto the fairing. Now I'll remove the dash panel. You have a screw on each side and it's a 532nd hex bit. So now I'll remove the two double-sided studs on the left and the right, and these are a 916 socket. So 
So from here, I'll disconnect the dash panel. You have a connector on the left and a connector on the right. Now the connector on the left, the push tab is on the top, and then the connector on the right, the push tab is on the bottom to release. From here, I'll go ahead and remove the skirt. So now I'll go ahead and pull back on the fairing. Now the inner fairing is going to be detached from the stereo bracket. So I'll remove the inner fairing and then I'll remove the stereo. Just make sure you're going nice and slow just to make sure that nothing is still connected. So now I'll just lift up on the stereo. I'll just lift straight up and then pull back at a 45 degree angle. So here you have your connectors that are connecting to the bar. This is where they were relocated to accommodate these bars. So I'll go ahead and get these disconnected. So here you have your left handlebar switch harness, and then here you have your right handlebar switch harness with the run stop switch. Now it's hard to mix these up because the run stop switch and the right handlebar switch harness are connected together. So now we have access to the bushings but obviously we do not have to change these bushings out. These are brand new. Whenever he had these bars installed, they changed the bushings out and these are polyurethane bushings. Now I'll go ahead and remove the front brake master cylinder. You have two torque screws and they're a T27. Once I remove it, I'll put it inside of a bag so it doesn't scratch anything up. Same thing on the clutch side for the clamp. You have two torque screws and they're T27. Here you have your trigger finger switch cap. Just push up on that and then just slide it out towards the side and it'll pop off. Now I'll remove the left switch housing. You have two torque screws and they're a T25. I'll remove the front housing. Now to remove this left hand control module, you just lift up on this latch. I just take a screwdriver and lift up on the latch and it'll pop right off. I'll go ahead and remove the rear housing. You have this white connector. You just disconnect it here. You have a little push tab on the top. Sometimes it's a little easier to use a picking tool. So I just use a picking tool to get that out. Now you always wanna be careful with this ribbon. You don't want it to get damaged. Now, depending on what grips you have, usually the stock grips are glued on. This one's not, so it'll just slide right off. Now it's gonna be the same thing for the right side. You have two torque screws and they're a T25. Here, your grip's just gonna fall off, so just take your grip off. Here you have your twist grip sensor. Same thing, just lightly pry up on this latch to release. So now I'll go ahead and tape up these connectors with some self-sealing silicone tape, just to protect them while I'm pulling them through the bars. Now, because the clamp acts as a vise and it helps a little bit when pulling these wires out, I'm gonna go ahead and slowly get these wires out on the right and the left. You don't wanna pull too hard on your uh, twist grip sensor. As soon as you can get a hold of this jacket here, pull on that.
So now I'll remove the clamp. You have four screws and they're a quarter inch hex bit. All right, so we're ready to get these bars wired up. We have our right handlebar switch harness. We have our twist grip sensor along with our left handlebar switch harness. And then we have our extensions. Now, Tap Performance does offer extensions on their website. So you can go there and pick them up when you're ordering your whole kit along with the Fat Baggers Easy Install Kit. So here I'd already picked these up at Harley Davidson. So we already have these available to make our connections in order to make these longer. We won't use the braided sleeve for now, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the jelly that Fat Baggers provided and then we'll get these ran through. Here you have your stock wiring harness with your connectors for your run stop switch and your control harness. So obviously you want this running up towards the grip. You can't really mix these up. Here you have your run stop switch with your wiring harness here. So just push them in till you hear it click. So when you go to tape these up, you don't wanna tape them together like that. You kinda of wanna have them offset. That way you just don't have a big bundle like this. You can get it through your bar a lot easier. So I like to remove the tags, just leaves less of a chance for something to snag. And then I also clean it up with some brake cleaner to make it nice and clean. I'm gonna try it with these first. And then if this doesn't work, obviously I'll use a braided sleeve because that always proves to work. So for this lube, you only need to put a little bit. You don't need to put a lot. You can wear gloves if you want to, but I usually just wipe it off my hands when I'm done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tape up these connectors just to protect them while I'm pulling them through. Here I'm just using a quarter inch socket. I'll just tie a knot on the end of the string. Should keep it in place. So here we have our left handlebar switch harness. We'll go ahead and get this one connected. Push it in until you hear it click. I'll go ahead and get this taped up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the twist grip sensor and also the right handlebar switch harness run through. Now there's different techniques on how to get these wires through. You can use the braided sleeve that Tap Performance provides. I'm gonna use the jelly from Fat Baggers. I'll lube these up and get them through. I'll get two strings attached, one for each one, so we can still manipulate it up and down. And then I'll work it down the bar. I'll tape up each string to each one and then run them through. So I tried to use what came in the kit for the Fat Baggers kit as far as the strings and stuff like that, but nothing's staying attached. Uh, it's just coming right off. And the more tape you add, the harder it is to get it through there. So I'm just gonna use the braided sleeve. I'm gonna run this through the sleeve, tape it up, run the nut through, and then get these wires ran through. Now I just wanna make sure that this comes out to where you can access it. It always helps when you got another set of hands doing bars, especially holding it down. Sometimes I'll use a, you know, a vise with a clamp to clamp the bars down and then that'll help me run the wires through so it doesn't move around. We have the connectors here, but you still don't wanna rush and tug on these connectors. You still got that, the extension harness you gotta get through. So you don't wanna pull too much. You still wanna do push pull you see the finish line and you pull and you're like, snap, oh, I was just there. I was just there. All right, so now we can get this braided sleeve off of here. Wires are right here. We'll get our twist grip sensor in nice and flush. So I'll tug on that one. All right, so we gotta pull all these out again because 
it just depend. Like I said, take your time or this is gonna happen. Now what happened here had nothing to do with the bars. This was just operator error. I already had the wires ran through. I just pulled a little bit too hard on the wires after I untaped them and they depinned. So we have the wiring ran through on the throttle side. You wanna line it up with these notches. You'll know which way it goes and you want it nice and tight and sitting flush right there. Just kind of pull it nice and tight where it's sitting nice and snug right there. And then obviously you want enough wiring here so you can wire up your switch housing. So now I'm gonna run the wiring on the left side. This is obviously the easier side. You just have one harness to worry about. So run this through, just make sure that when you're running this through, you have this white connector that's going to the switch housing to your left hand control module. You want this running up. So I stuck my wire into the braided sleeve. You want to tape up the end. You don't want to tape up the connector. Make sure you give it a slight tug, make sure it's secured on there. I'll go ahead and tape up this connector here just to secure it. Nothing gets depinned. I'll go ahead and fish this out. So we're wired up. We'll go ahead and clean this up. So now I'm gonna get the bars back on so I can get the left and right hand control modules on there as well as the switch housings. And then after that, we'll get the lines routed for the brake line and the clutch line extension. Now, when you're mounting your bar, you just wanna make sure you have equal space on both sides when you're mounting the clamp on. Now what's good about these bars, it goes from an inch and a half to an inch and that way you don't have to modify your fairing. Here I have the right hand control module. We'll get these connectors connected, ran through this channel, through the fingers, and then connect them for your run stop switch and your right handlebar switch harness. Just make sure they're fully seated. Just give it a slight tug. So on the throttle side, on your grip, you're gonna have the teeth on the inside. Those are gonna line up with the teeth on your grip here. You just wanna make sure that it fully seats and that you have a good snap. When you pull your throttle, it instantly snaps back and you don't have a sticky throttle. You obviously wanna line that up to where the logo is horizontal here. I'll go ahead and throw the switch housing on. And then obviously you want this part right here, this fatty part of the grip on the end you want it to line up right in here. So just adjust your switch housing to where you get your grip to sit in there. We'll get our front switch housing on. Same thing, make sure it's sitting over the grip. You wanna tighten them down evenly. Once again, check your throttle. Should snap right back. Same thing, you just have the one connector, connect that there. Now it's gonna be the same thing with this grip. Make sure it's fully seated. Now you're gonna have a notch on your grip on this end and it's gonna line up with a notch in here on your switch housing. All right, go ahead and throw your trigger finger switch cap back on. Come in from the side. You'll hear it click in. Just make sure it's secure on there. All right, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and add the clutch line extension from Fat Baggers. You usually have a upper clip here that you would remove, but that one is missing from here but you will have a clip up here. Just take that off. 
And then you also have a clip down here, pop that off, and then this will be free. All right, so from here you can just lift up the sleeve to expose the clutch adjuster. I'll pop this red locking tab out. Now you can use a screwdriver, but you can also just use your fingers. Just push your clutch adjuster down and then you can lock it to access the coupler and the ball. We'll lift up on that locking tab. You're gonna push the locking tab up in order for that ball to come out. Just use a small screwdriver from the back to pop it out. There you go, so it's disconnected and I'll lift straight up to disconnect it the rest of the way. And then you have two tabs on the sides. Get this one popped out. I'll just use a screwdriver to hold it in place to get the other one popped out. We're gonna get rid of this and replace it with the one that Fat Baggers provides. You'll take this one, slide it on. Then here you have your adjuster. You just wanna get this loose enough so the ball will fit in there. Slide your ball in. Then just twist this down to lock it into place. And then you're gonna use this nut to secure it down. So this top nut is a 7 16 and this bar down here is a 3 8 So you just wanna tighten down this top nut to secure it down, nice and tight. Now we'll take our new tubing, slide this on. It only goes on one way in order for it to slide on this. And then all you're gonna do is connect this connector to here, the same way you take it off. And just try to get everything lined up. Might take some little playing around with, but just get this ball to line up in that little coupler and then lock it into place the same way. All right, so we have the ball in there. Push down that locking tab so it keeps it in place. Once it gets back on the bike, we'll adjust the clutch adjuster. But here you have your sleeve. You just push this back down. All right, so here you have your ABS module. Obviously, this is your brake line for the front right here. In most cases, you would just replace the brake line and just get along a longer brake line in order to accommodate your bars. We're gonna go ahead and reroute this brake line as far as the connections here. We're gonna pop this off. We're gonna take the brake line, move it towards the back side so it goes in nice and smooth into here, and then we're gonna run it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this cover off. You'll have some tape, maybe some zip ties. Get this cover off, and then we're gonna get this brake line routed. So you just follow your brake line up, making sure you have the right line. Currently the brake line's running out, so we want it running in. So we'll pop it out right here. We'll take our other line, route it towards the front. route this one towards the back. You can put it on the back bottom one. So now here you have your brake line. So you can run this up. So now this is running towards the back. We're gonna cut a two inch gap right here. That way you have a little bit more slack. Obviously we don't want our brake line rubbing against any of these sharp edges. So we'll clean this up and we'll also wrap some tape around the brake line just to keep it protected. Just an extra layer of security. So you have your brake line right here. We cleared up all those wires just to get them out of the way. So you have your cluster right here of cables and wires. It's held on by this retaining clip. We're gonna pop this retaining clip out, pop our brake line out. It's currently on the top spot here. And then that way it's free and you're gonna have a lot more line to play with. We'll take our brake line, just kinda of work it around this harness so it's on this side of the harness. So just popping that brake line out of there gives you a lot more room to reach up for these 14 inch bars. Obviously we wanna make sure that you can still turn left and right 
uh, once we get it mounted up here. And then we'll also secure it down. That way it's not rubbing on any of your suspension or your frame. All right, so now I'll go ahead and remount the front brake master cylinder. You wanna tighten these down evenly. So I won't tighten it down all the way just yet. We still wanna get them to sit on the bike and then we can move it up or down. Now for this brake line, it is sticking forward some. So I'm just gonna crack this banjo bolt just a little bit so I can push this brake line back so it's straight with the bar. Now you don't wanna loosen it up too much or you'll introduce air into the line and then you're just gonna to have to bleed your brakes anyway. So to crack this banjo bolt, I'm using a 12 millimeter socket. Straighten the line out and then tighten it back up. Now there is a torque spec to these. You don't wanna over tighten them. Now you do have some crush washers in here, but we didn't take it completely off. So they should be fine to set right back into place. From here, I'll just go ahead and reinstall the cover. Run a couple zip ties on the bottom, just to secure it in place. Go ahead and throw the cover back on. Make sure your brake line is routed through here. So we got the brake line coming out of the top cover right up here. Make sure you push this little cluster back into place. You have tabs along the cover and just push it down to secure on the tabs. So I just always cut these off. This is not gonna fit around this inch and a half bar anyway. So I'll go ahead and just cut this off. All right, now I'll go ahead and get the clutch side installed. You don't have to worry about rerouting this one. We did add that clutch line extension, which gives you plenty of line. Obviously you can see here, this is still very loose. So we'll get down to that clutch adjuster and get this adjusted. So we got the clutch adjusted. You just pop this red locking tab out and then you adjust your clutch here up or down and now it engages like it should. We'll get this sleeve back on and then we'll get the clips remounted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie the brick line and the clutch line to the bar. So I like to route the lines in front of the bar so it's a lot cleaner on the back. So your switch harnesses are usually located right here so here you have your run stop switch along with your right handlebar switch harness. And then you have your left handlebar switch harness. These are obviously disconnected from here to extend these lines. So we'll go ahead and get these connected, but usually they're located right here. All right, so now I'm gonna get the fairing remounted so we can get these bars adjusted. Obviously I have a lot more to put together with all the wires and the amp. So I'll just pull this back. Here you have your switch harnesses. I'll connect the run stop switch. I'll reconnect the right handlebar switch harness. And then here you have your twist grip sensor. I'll run this towards the front. You have your left handlebar switch harness. I'll connect this one. Make sure you reconnect your twist grip sensor. So we'll go ahead and reinstall the dash panel. Obviously your left connector, right connector, the right connector tab is gonna to be towards the bottom and the left connector tab is gonna to be towards the top. So we're gonna reconnect this. 
So from here, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the tank. Just make sure you reconnect your vent hose, reroute your overflow hose, connect your gray connector, and also you wanna make sure you reconnect the fuel line. So now we'll go ahead and run a test, make sure all the switches work. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall the seat. That way we can get the bars adjusted to where we need them. Also, we wanna make sure we can turn all the way left, all the way right, nothing is snagging. And we'll also adjust the controls and the switches. Living the dream, man. Yeah. Living the dream. All right, so let's get these uh, tightened down. The controls are good, levers are good. Uh, let's get this tightened down, then we'll get the fairing all reinstalled and we'll get this thing buttoned up. Hell yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Now, if you're just changing out your bars for 12 inches and lower, and you're not changing out your riser bushings, you can just pull your fairing forward, remove your dash panel, and you can just change out your bars right here.